good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. It's not the Mr. Alan J. Show. But you know what? <laughs> Let's leave that out there in honor of him because I'm going to tell you something. You haven't gotten to meet him. No, I haven't. But you have a love for guitars, and he has a love for guitars, and I need to put the two of y'all yeah, together. Yeah, I'd love to talk shop. Now, can you play guitar well? Oh, man, I did in my youth. I haven't um, I haven't in a long time, which is sad. I don't make the time. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that That's I crazy. should make more yeah, time with yeah, it. But yeah. I somehow amassed, between my son, Finn, and myself, we've amassed a little collection of oddballs, and it's fun. So I'm a collector at this point. And what is your oldest guitar? Oh, good grief. That's a good question. Finn's got one from the 60s, I think. Oh, but, cool. But my... my my pride and joy is a Rickenbacker um, that came out, I think, in 2018, but they only made 25 of them. Okay. Uh, and it was one of those things where I just saw it on Instagram, and I said, if you guys ever release that to the public, I'd like one. Mm -hmm. And the company reached out to me and said, we're actually going to make 25 of them, and I was able to buy one. Um, but it's, cool. it's worth more money than it should be, and so I never play it. So it's one of yeah. those things like... Why do I even own this thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but you do. Well, everybody who has watched ETC for years and years and years knows that you began the job that I carried on later for many, many yeah. years. You began sitting right over there under that dreaded red wall <laughs> that I can't stand. Yeah, that wall drives me crazy. Yeah. But you had a big, huge desk, and you did eight-minute segments. Right. And that's where ETC television, local television, yeah. truly began. North Georgia now, and, and I was actually, even prior to that, uh, our first ever live coverage of an election mm -hmm. uh, was done right over there. And so the, the crew here had never done a live broadcast. I, of course, had never done a live broadcast. Um, so it was a lot of fun, and we, we all figured it out together. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's... It's funny when you look back and, and you think of every. It's always easy to say those were the glory days because it's, you know, nostalgia kind of paints right. a wide brush over that. Yeah. But it was also a lot of figuring stuff out, yeah. you know, yeah. seat of our pants kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. it was fun. Well, today we're trying to figure out something from the seat of our pants because we had a little change yesterday. And so we're down to today we're shooting with one camera and we're not doing what we usually do. And it's a little different for us. Yeah. And we don't have the things that we need today, but we're gonna make it work. Well, you know, you know? I, I have to say though, uh, and you've done plenty of cooking shows and demonstrations, I sometimes love it when we have a technical difficulty yeah. because yeah. that makes it more real. approachable and yes. real. Yes. And I will never yes. forget um, when we used to shoot up a town and country in Blue Ridge and we were doing a live group. And we're going to show a little footage of that oh, good. today. So this was for the Fannin County Women's Group. Mm -hmm. And pretty much if it could go wrong, it did go wrong. Mm -hmm. But rather than panicking or, you know, we just laughed. As a group, we laughed. And we just went on with it. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of my favorite live shows because things went yeah. wrong. Yeah. And yeah. so it, it, it sort of humanizes it. It's less sterile. And exactly. So, yeah, it's okay. We got one camera. That's fine. It's a exactly. conversation. Exactly. And, and one of the things that happened here many years ago, I was sitting on set live doing the show and lightning struck. Well, we lost our power, but I didn't miss a word. I just kept talking, kept looking at the camera and kept talking and knowing that it was recording what I was doing. Right. And so when we came back, they came out and said, how did you know to do that? And I said, I didn't know yeah, to yeah. do that. I just did it, you know. So often it does make for the best television. I agree. And that's, you know, I've never used a teleprompter. I've never used a script. I have no, and, and Rich Scott used to compliment me. I loved Rich Scott. And he, oh, yeah. he would say, you are so good at what you do because you just do what yeah. you love. And doesn't that make a difference? Uh, listen, I, I I also don't write speeches. I don't write a script because then it's me trying to remember specific words. Yeah, forget that. And it's you know it's supposed to be coming from here, yes, right? I mean, yes. so whether it's my story or whether it's whatever it is you're doing, if you know the material and you're genuine about it or you're passionate about mm -hmm. whether it's food or mm -hmm. whatever it is, right. you know nobody wants to watch somebody reading a script. Right. You know exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to share some photos now of some things. I have some photos of Hans. And Evelyn, can you start recording again now? Can we do that? Um, we have some photos um, of you. I have one of you at MD Anderson. I have a couple others of you at different stages. I have one when you and I were up at the, I believe it was the Church of God in McKaysville mm. many years ago. I have different photos of us out and about in the community, and we were doing what we loved. We were visiting with our ETC patrons. Yeah, I, I miss that. I mean, oh I, my I gosh. think more yeah. than anything else, you know, I, 
uh, and I might have told the story before, but you know, growing up in Jasper, you think of Ella J as your rival. Yeah. Uh, and so Ella J, and then you know, beyond Ella J, who knew what that was like—the wilds of North Georgia. Mm -hmm. So getting when when ETC um, acquired, mm -hmm. I guess it was Kudzu Cable. They took over a cable station that went all the way up into Turtle Town, Farner, Ducktown. Um, we got to meet all those people, and they were so uh, gracious mm -hmm. and grateful. We're showing your cookbook now, oh, okay. which, is, which is really cool. That cookbook is sold out. Yeah, I need to make what a new a one. beautiful, well, thank beautiful you. cookbook, and what a great opportunity. And then there's one of you in the hospital at MD Anderson when, when we didn't know that you would ever return home to us. Yeah, and, and I didn't either. And I had no did. idea. You did. You did. So there you go. And now we also have a couple of millstones, and I want you to talk about Oh, these. yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you reminding me of that. These are very, very old. Old and unique. And, you know, the millstones, uh, and, of course, what we're talking about is they're, they're, they're large. They have a, they're circular, but they have a hole in the middle. These are the two pieces of stone that would be in a grist mill to make flour or to make grits. Uh, sometimes they're, um, they're turned by animals, sometimes they're water turned, like mm -hmm. in the case of uh, John's Mill John's and Jasper. Mill. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the um, Logan Pike Turnpike uh, grits up there in Blairsville. Mm -hmm. And these are from the mid-1800s, and they used to sit in front of the Woodbridge Inn. My dad right. bought them in 80 or 81, and they're a matched pair, and we've had them, like I said, since 80, 81. And um, we decided to sell them. And so I, I just wanted to share, it's, there's such a rare thing, especially to have a matched pair. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody is looking for like a unique thing for their home to either side of the driveway or for a vineyard or for your cabin, these things just don't come up that often. Right. Uh, but they're sitting in my driveway and I just thought, you know what, these are such a unique part of this history. So um, I am so easy to get in touch with. Um, Hanscooks.com is my website. Uh, or get in touch with Sherry. If you yep. know somebody that might want uh, that pair of stones, we're, we're, we're ready to say goodbye to them because mm -hmm. we're not doing them any justice. And, and it would be so cool to, to later see them at an event center or oh, yeah. at, at, at something where people go all the time. Yeah, that has know? become known as like a, a symbol of hospitality, you know, yeah. for some reason. Yeah. So you see them in vineyards or especially when you travel um, overseas, oftentimes you'll see them in front of restaurants and they are heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't, don't make, you know, oh, yeah. don't come with your pickup truck think you can just pick them up I mean, it's it's uh, they are heavy duty stuff but yeah, anyway happening. they're very unique and, and rare and we'd yeah. like to see them appreciated well recently we sadly had to say goodbye to a gentleman that meant the world to you and I both David Ralston left us and um, what what a gentleman mm -hmm. what a wonderful man and I hope last week I kept saying who could fill his shoes who could fill his shoes who could fill his shoes I am praying that Cherie will run for his office. No, I didn't realize And I am praying she's that she will run to be in that position. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Fannin County, Gilmer County, and Dawson County could be once again served by a Ralston? And she is such an incredible woman, and I, I'm so... I hope that, that I hope that's the answer to what I've worried and struggled about. You know, there was a um, I can't remember I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Lukovich or Lukovich. He does uh, he does comics for the AJC, and there was a, a, a sort of a tribute piece to him uh, to Ralston where it showed Ralston at the at Heaven's Gate and uh, the I guess it's St. Peter that uh, guards mm -hmm. the gate there that said, "Well, which one is David Ralston?" And he said, "Well, he's the one reaching across the aisle, and it shows two lines leading <gasps> into heaven." Now you imagine and me crying. Ralston was reaching his hand out oh and that's what I loved about him is did not matter your your political no. uh, you know your affiliations yeah. that man was about people and I I miss the day where two people could disagree and sit down and have a conversation yeah. without yeah. name calling or mudslinging or it's us versus them yep. he was I think a true southern gentleman that knew how to to grease the the cogs, right? He knew how to lubricate things yep. to because yep. it's not all this or that. You gotta find a it's all not all red or blue. There's gotta be some purple, and he yep. was willing to reach across the aisle. And I just yep. thought, yep. what a what an amazing man. Yeah. Well, we we just you know we can't say enough about him and for him. But one of the things, one of the greatest things we were ever allowed to do, was to read the proclamation on a heart of the home, a, a special that we shot up in in Fannin County at your home kitchen at. Oh, yeah. country. And Jen actually read this and, and it was just amazing because the state of Georgia actually honored you as being that true do not give it up boy. Now you did not give up and you still you, not. You know, the doctors would say you're not gonna make it and you'd go, Oh yeah, you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me. 
And and you did, and you talk about our ETC prayer partners. People prayed oh, for yeah. you everywhere. I think I'm still on some prayer lists. And, and the reality is I will always have health issues. I mean, we all have health issues, right? But I mean, obviously, it was uh, it, for those of you who don't know, who, who's this guy? What are they talking about? I have no stomach. I have no esophagus. Uh, they removed part of my collarbone. There are two ribs. I think they gave me a hysterectomy. Yeah. I, I've, <laughs> I've told that joke too many times now. Uh, but anyway, I am a, I'm a highly redacted person, right? A lot has been removed from me. And, uh, and multiple times, actually three separate times, they told my wife, this is it. Get your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just said, that's a, a tribute to how stubborn I am, and I come by it naturally, as yes, you know. Yes, um, yes. But that's the way my dad taught me how to swim, was threw me in the deep end, and then he's like, just swim to me, I'm standing right here. And unbeknownst to me, he was taking little steps backwards. He was yeah. backing up, he was backing up. And so that goal was, I could still see the goal, but it was always, you know, slowly moving backwards. And I, I, either you're gonna make it there or you're gonna drown, and drowning wasn't an option. And so. Mm -hmm. That was his personality, and of course he wouldn't let me drown, but he was, well, now that I say that, he might have, <laughs> uh, no, no yeah. a little bit. He yeah. may have drowned a little bit. Anyway, yeah. the point being is that he, you know, he, he kept changing the goals for the better. He kept mm -hmm. expecting the best, and he expected the best and the most out of everybody. And so many people come to me and say, you know what, your dad um, expected more out of me than my own parents exactly. did. And at the time, I resented it. Yeah, I'm not saying for me, but from them, they'd say, I hated your dad when I worked for him. And now in hindsight, there was no one else he who... He changed my life. You know, yes. I, I say, yes. and, you know, I hear it all the time that people who've gone on to be successful, you know, whatever whatever realm they chose, mm -hmm. they're where they are because somebody expected more from them mm -hmm. than mediocre. Mm -hmm. And if, if somebody said, well, how was your meal? And they said, oh, it was fine. He's mm -hmm. like, what was wrong? Because mm -hmm. fine wasn't, fine, doesn't fine isn't good. No, not for jokes. If it's not yeah. superlative, if it's yeah. not like, wow, then yeah. what do we do wrong? Yeah. You know, so yeah. okay yeah. isn't isn't yeah. okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's missing. And I mean, you know, to the point again, he was a little rough around the edges to put it mildly. But I do think we uh, we accept media. I'm gonna, I sound like the old man now uh, that we accept mediocrity too often. Because mm -hmm. any, but anybody can do mediocre. And and truly, we could make everybody in our audience cry if we told the true story of your father and how he escaped Germany. Because I'm looking at this book. This her mom was in a concentration camp in um, Germany and she survived. Well. And um, you know she was in the Holocaust and she survived. And we think about your dad came out of Germany and he survived. He survived on grass. I mean, he, he literally, and yeah. you know, he was never proud of it, but he actually um, took rations from a dying Russian soldier, mm -hmm. uh, he and his brothers, because they were starving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he said, you know, he, he's not proud of it, but in those in those days, you did what you could to survive. survive. It's survival. And, you know, and how wild it is to think my daughter Ella, who is now 19, now is living in Hamburg for a year, and I think my dad did you know, so much to escape, of course then it was East Germany, mm -hmm. to come to the States and create this amazing story in life, and now my kids are like, oh, we're going back to Germany. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, so, no, but, but that's on. great, but it's a different world there yeah, now, and, yeah. but also they're doing it because that, that, um, that spirit, that adventurous um, wanderlust, whatever you want to call it, um, goes on to them now, and mm -hmm. uh, my son Finn is thinking about going to live in Germany for a few months as well, uh, I love the fact that they're not intimidated or they're not, they don't feel like, okay, I, I live in Jasper, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. They see the world as, as <laughs> Do they know. speak German? Yeah, not as well as, you know, when you don't use it, you lose it. But um, right. Ella is actually doing her fluency classes right now. In fact, uh, today is Wednesday. She already done it for the day. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, because we're dual citizens, uh, education is free over there. Um, so she has to get her language certification. So she's spending a year as an au pair, uh, helping take care of a two-year-old girl over there, living with a family in Hamburg, which I love, mm -hmm, uh, because cool. she basically went from one household into another household. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, and a great family. I got to meet them uh, this past June, and I'm going to go see her in, in March as well for her birthday. Um, but anyway, so while she's there for this first year, she's taking her language certification, and then she has the option of going into schooling or getting a job straight out, or you know, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. she's enjoying it. Well, we want to share the footage of when you were proclaimed as a special person in the state of Georgia. So, um, Aaron, have we got that ready? Here we go. The rocker's on the front porch singing old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Looking through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. Sherry's in the kitchen, 
cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories a heart of the home. Welcome to Heart of the Home, away from home. We are certainly away from home, but we're actually in my new home, Fan and Kim. And we're joined by my friend, Hans Rufert, who happens to be a survivor. Yeah. Um, a survivor in a point that, what, what happened to you in the last 90 days? Well, last 90 days, I was basically told that I would, uh, wouldn't be here today. Right. And, uh, and I've got on black today in honor of you, but yeah. I don't have my pantyhose <laughs> on, so I'm not so heading to you're not the morning. funeral. Okay, good. No, well, no, good. no, 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 no. It's good to know. But although, there's always good food at a funeral, so we're going uh, to have good food. We're going to have some good food today. So. We are at Town & Country Furniture in Fannin County, where this kitchen was designed around you, wasn't it? It really was, yeah. We, we shot about 50 cooking shows, actually, right here. Mm -hmm. and they, uh, they changed the countertop out, Incredible raised the hood for me because I'm so tall. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, this was, this was sort of my home away from home kitchen. So. Okay, let's give people a little bit of history. You were the Food Network, the third runner-up. That's right, in 2005, and then two weeks later, diagnosed with stomach cancer. Uh, ended up losing, I didn't lose that, I know where it is, it's probably in a jar somewhere, but they removed <laughs> half of my stomach and half of my esophagus, and I lost about 80 pounds in the process. Uh -huh. I um, found it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I, I'd like it back now, please. Okay, you um, have it. And then, uh, and then recently I was uh, diagnosed with, with brain cancer, essentially, which, uh, and they told me, you know, that would be dead by now right. and luckily it turned out to not be cancer and turned out to be a rare infection so uh, right. we got all that under control and so I'm standing next to you today. You are standing right. next to me and next to you stands a lady mm -hmm. who has something to read about you. This I is a resolution from the state of Georgia. Now can you read the men's name who are responsible for this Jen? Welcome Jen Roberts. She is my assistant. She makes sure I'm in line, in control, on top of things at all times and if you don't mind her she will take you out of here. So. So, somebody needs to. So. <laughs> I try. Hans, I'm very pleased to be a courier today from the Georgia House of Representatives. And this is particularly from Representative Ralston of the 7th District and Representative Graves of the 12th District. Mm -hmm. So, young man, be it known, a resolution recognizing and commending Mr. Hans Rufert and for other purposes. Whereas, growing up, Mr. Hans Rufert lived with his family above their restaurant the Woodbridge Inn in Jasper, Georgia, and whereas, fascinated with cooking as a child, Mr. Rufert grew up watching culinary masters such as Julia Child, Jacques Pepin, Martin Yan, Graham Carr, and Justin Wilson, and whereas, after years of honing his cooking skills at the family's restaurant, Mr. Rufert was invited to be a guest on a local cooking show, which led to his on show on ETC3 TV called In the Kitchen with Hans, and whereas in 2005, Mr. Rufert was selected from over 10,000 applicants to appear on the Food Network's The Next Food Network Star. He placed third in a competition against eight other chefs from around the country vying for a spot in the Cooking Network's lineup. And, whereas, shortly after his successful showing, Mr. Rufert was diagnosed with stage three stomach cancer, resulting in the removal of half of his stomach and half of his esophagus. And, whereas, thanks to the healing and skilled hands of the staff at MD Anderson Cancer Hospital in Texas, Mr. Rufert remains cancer-free to this day. And, whereas, besides hosting his own live audience show on ETC3 TV, Hans Cooks the World, which has earned him three telly awards, Mr. Rufert has recently taped a show for Georgia Public Broadcasting, Hans Cooks the South, slated to air this year. And, Whereas, Mr. Rufert is united in love and marriage to his supportive and caring wife, Amy, and they have been blessed with two remarkable children, Finn and Ella. And, whereas, in his first cookbook, Eat Like There's No Tomorrow, this gifted chef shares with audiences his love of food and portrays a truthful glimpse into his battle with cancer. And, Whereas his appreciation and love of food are evident in all his projects, including his line of signature spice blends, and whereas it is abundantly fitting and proper that Mr. Rufert's gastro and gastronomical genius and devotion to uplifting the lives of others through food be appropriately recognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Georgia House of Representatives that the members of this body commend Mr. Hans Rufert for his incredible career as a chef, writer, and culinary television star. 
be it further resolved that the clerk of the House of Representatives is authorized and directed to transmit an appropriate copy of this resolution to Mr. Hans Rufert. This was read and adopted in the Georgia House of Representatives on March the 30th, 2009, certified and sealed by Robert E. Rivers, Jr., clerk of the Georgia House of Representatives. That's beautiful. These don't come along no, every day. No, thank that you is so amazing. Much. That is thank amazing. You, thank you, thank you. And, and this little ribbon, it's called a pretty... Not every resolution that they prepare has the Georgia seal and the ribbon on it, and they refer to this as a pretty copy. It is an unusual size. I made four stops last night looking for a frame. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Jen just read the um, the honor honor. What an honor! It, it really the state is. Of Georgia honored you. You know, so and so cool. I know, I know you had a hand in that. I think Christy Lindstrom had yeah, a hand in that because yeah. she was working some with the yeah, with Senator Ralston. Right. Rawson. right. Um, now, I get confused. Was he a state senator or a state congressman? He's our representative. He was our representative. Representative. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, I always yes, get those yes, two yes, confused. Yes, I, yes. I didn't pay attention yes. enough in, uh, yes. in civics and social yeah. studies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, again, when, when I was on death's door, at least kind of flirting with death's door, uh, what an amazing thing. And, and you know, I, I take that seriously in that I feel like it is my obligation to be that lighthouse for mm -hmm. people that are going through it. There's a, there's a gentleman um, in Kennesaw right now who just had his stomach removed about four days ago. And he was on the fence about having it done. He knew that he should have it done. Statistically, he should have it done. But he's in his 60s, and he thought, well, why? You know, why am I doing this, you know? Okay. Did he have cancer? He did. Same, okay. ca same cancer as me. Okay. But they... You know, unfortunately, a lot of times they kind of leave it uh, at the discretion of the patient, saying, well, we, we removed the tumor, we would like to remove the stomach, and that almost implies that you have an option. And you do have an option, but there's an 80% chance that it will come back if you leave part of that stomach. Mm -hmm. So why would you do that? Those are, you know, and so, but prior to meeting me, or, or someone like me, he didn't know that you could have a life beyond, I mean, I didn't know you could live without mm -hmm. a stomach. I mean, who, who'd ever heard of such a thing? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I... And we do laugh because you are a chef. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you do yeah. love to eat. I do. And I... so it's kind of cruelty slapping you in the it, face. It is and yeah. it isn't. But, you know, here's something that you'll, you can relate to. If, if I came over to you and said, Sherry, cook something, you'd be like, well, what? A dessert? A main course? A salad? A, like, just say cook something. It's too many options. Like, if, if somebody told an artist, paint something, well, what am I painting? Is it a still life? Is it a guitar or what mm -hmm. what am I painting so what I like to tell people whether it's diabetes whether it's you know stomach cancer whether it's um, uh, you're lactose intolerant or whether it's celiac disease you can't eat gluten rather than focusing on the things that you can't eat mm -hmm. think of it as focus because now instead of having to think of all of this random stuff now I know what what colors out of this giant box of a million crayons now I know which ones I can paint with and from there it's easier to create we think we want a million choices, but our brain can't handle that. So I think if somebody says now, hey, can you make me a sugar-free dessert? Well, then you're gonna, now you know, mm -hmm. here's where I need to focus. So mm -hmm. I think um, whatever it is in life, if you can get to focusing on the positives, and this sounds like a, uh, a motivational poster you'd mm -hmm. see hanging on the wall, but if you can focus on the positive and don't worry about all the things that you can't tolerate or handle, mm -hmm. um, I think it makes it so much easier. So. Um, that is what I try to do in the nutritional videos that I do with the Gastric Cancer Foundation. In fact, we just shot a couple of them. Uh, November is Stomach Cancer Awareness Month, so I've been doing a lot of videos. Um, I'm trying to get people to really, you know, it's not so much a half full, half empty. In, my, in our case, the glass has been removed. You know what I mean? It's not half full, it's not empty, it's gone. Mm -hmm. But we still got to figure out how to, how to deal with it, right? So I love enjoying food vicariously through other people. So. I don't miss that Cook feeling. Cook for me and you oh, can yeah, enjoy. Yeah. You, he, I mean, he can enjoy watching I, me I do. eat that crab I, or that lobster. Oh, that lobster, yeah. Eat. Yeah, thank you, Susan. If Susan, Susan's watching, oh, my Susan, God. Susan. Not time for another lobster party. <laughs> oh, my um, God. So when life hands you lobsters. But, so, again, rather than being upset that I can't eat a lot of something or a giant piece of cheesecake, what I always tell people is, what's the best bite? If somebody, if you get this big honking piece of cheesecake, which is the best bite? The first bite, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. After that, the second's okay, the third's okay, and by bite and six, you you're, you're like, what like am I miserable. doing, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you, yeah. it, it's that law of diminishing returns. So what I would rather do is just order a cheesecake for the table, everybody takes a bite, and then you're done. And then mm -hmm. you, you've had the experience, it's mm -hmm. wow, you mm -hmm. had the best bite of the whole cheesecake, but you don't have that 
that sensation of just like, oh my God, I'm mm -hmm. miserable. You have mm -hmm. to undo your belt by a couple mm -hmm. notches or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, what was it, Zig Ziglar, Ziglar always said, um, nothing tastes as good as uh, as being thin feels, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like he, yeah, he, he yeah, had yeah. some version yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. No one ever force fed me to eat yeah. dessert, right? Yeah, yeah, but you can yeah. still enjoy things in moderation without, yeah. you know, limiting yourself. So anyway, I, I do, Zig Ziglar, if we, we, you and I have talked about before, my parents used to listen to him in the car when mm -hmm. growing up. And I would always roll my eyes like, oh my God, we're listening to either the Le, Le Mis <laughs> soundtrack or Zig Ziglar. And I, and, you know, it's just nauseating, I thought at the yeah, time. And now and you love it. Now I find myself <laughs> quoting Zig Ziglar. <laughs> Happiness is not a person, place, or thing. It is a decision. Because when you're putting those situations where you have every reason to be miserable and no one would fault you to be miserable, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yet you still find a way to be happy, yeah. right? Or yeah. make other people happy, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that um, that is the greatest gift. And I'm, I'm running out of time, but let me, let me tell you, this time of year especially, um, when the days are shorter, people go into depression. I was having problems. My dad had problems with that seasonal affective disorder where we all kind of have these uh, in those winter months. I hate it. Yeah, I, I, I get. I get yeah, it's, it's, antsy, it's angry, like having a wet like blanket it. over your yes, soul. Yes, you know I what I mean? Like, like it. It, it's so hard to get moving. So one of the things Zig Ziglar talked about was having a wall of gratitude. Now, it doesn't have to be a physical wall, but mentally, like who are the people that uh, that actually made a difference? And and you are one of those people. And I have from time to time just texted you saying, thinking about you, how are you doing? It takes, it's free. Mm -hmm. It takes, you know, less than a minute mm -hmm. to start that conversation. Mm -hmm. And you getting a random text or a phone call or an email or, or a hand handwritten mm -hmm. do people still do those oh yeah, yeah. I do. well I good do. Yeah. but you know when you open a mailbox and you get that and to know that somebody thought about me today mm -hmm. and cared enough to reach out to me mm -hmm. you have just made that person's day better mm -hmm. so especially this time of year I would I mean I, I would ask of you to just think about who, who are the people that meant something? It could be Sandra Payne, my, my social studies teacher, who I should have paid more attention to in her <laughs> class. Yeah. Uh, or, or it could be, um, you know, uh, he's passed on now, but Lionel Clark and Ed Pickens was one of, was, you know, there, there were so many people that propped me up at some point or mm -hmm. believed in me when I didn't. To just reach out to them and like, hey, I'm thinking about you. How are you doing? Right. Um, you, you'll be amazed how that will come back to you a hundredfold. That's not the reason you're doing it. You're not no, doing it no, as no, self, no. Jack. But no. my point is, is that, you're Every day, a uh, you know, I, I noticed um, somebody the other day who got a haircut, and I just said, it's an older lady, and I said, you know, your hair looks really good. And she goes, oh, my God, you just made my day. That was free, and mm -hmm. I meant it. It was just I hadn't seen her yeah. in a while. Yeah. And it, it is so easy, and I think that's part of the hospitality gene, and you have mm -hmm. it too. Mm -hmm. We all have the ability to make someone else's day. We also have the ability to ruin somebody's day by making sure. a flippant, sure. you know. Sure. Some, you know, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good at and, sarcastic. And you can't bring back those cruel, no, you're hateful, absolutely not. heartful words. Yeah that just destroy you and tear you down and 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 shame on anybody who tears somebody down and it's and easy uh, it, it's yeah, yeah it's it, easy it shows how little yeah. person you are it's and that's sad. yeah and, and sad. you know the thing is i i kind of think of it this way is that you know to make a quip and i'm again i'm i was raised by the master quipster right joe could cut anybody down of course he meant it from a don rickles kind oh, of he a was so great. He, he was an equal opportunity insulter yeah but so he meant it to to get the room laughing but there were times where it was a little too close to the bone but that little burst of you you know you're putting somebody down you get this rush but it's a very short burn you know high intensity mm -hmm. short mm -hmm. burn rush mm -hmm. complimenting somebody building them up is, it takes a little more effort, mm -hmm. but it's a long, it, it, the, the, if you look at a bell curve, you know, an insult is ha ha whoop and it's done, mm -hmm. but for you, but for them, it's like forever. a thorn, it's stays forever, forever. Yeah. but that compliment stays with both of you, and it's mm -hmm. this long, slow decay, and it, it, it's genuine, it makes a moment, and it's contagious, and yeah. uh, in, the, in a post-COVID world, the word contagious can be very negative, but I mean it in a very positive way. You have the ability to influence other people, and the most beautiful simple way with what you say and how you say it um, one of the greatest compliments to you was when we put out a word and I said we're going to be selling lemon pies oh yeah wow Hans, how many yeah. hundred did we sell oh it was quite like 80 or something that yeah. within two days yeah. I mean, it was and people insane. were calling me and showing up and saying can you bring me six can you bring me four can you bring me eight can yeah. you bring me two? no it was great and I'm like great. are you kidding me and and there's a special lady that came uh, to the Woodbridge Inn and had her picture yeah. made with you yeah I remember that and and she's so precious and and she just said I wanted to help yep. and it was a simple help of buying a lemon pie yep. 
and it helped you get one more step to where you were going for recovery. That was in 2019, if I remember. That was my yeah. last, knock on wood, last big surgery. Right, uh, and, right. you know, the uh, auxiliary expense of, of travel and hotel and having to eat while you're out there, in addition mm -hmm. to your medical copays and all of those things, um, it really does make a difference. And, you know, it, there's so many people like me that are going through something like that sure. now. That, um, that people genuinely want to help, they just don't know how to help. Mm -hmm. And the people who say, oh, let me know, I'll do anything, that doesn't really mean anything. But if you, we've talked about this before, say, do you need me to cut your grass? Do you mm -hmm. need me to pick up groceries? Do you right. need me to make a, right. a, a meal for your family? You know, do you need me to do wh whatever it is? Come catch your laundry up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, things yeah. like that, yeah. it, it, it is by giving a specific example of this is how I would like to help. It's uh, it's tremendous. It mm -hmm. really is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've talked about it before. I feel like, you know, especially with your, as a caregiver on your side, as a patient on my side, there should be an etiquette book uh, for people on how to deal with people that are going through a life illness. Because mm -hmm. we all want to help. We just don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. And so what ends up happening is you say nothing, and then it gets awkward because time goes by, and then it's even more awkward because you hadn't you haven't checked on them. Um, and it's, it's such an easy thing to mitigate and navigate. There just needs to be a, a nice little, the 101 great ideas for helping people through illness. Well, we can't, we can't end today without thinking about somebody who stood on stage and sang to raise money for you when we did the Hans Friendraiser. Oh, yeah, yeah. Selena Hales is now battling cancer. Mm. She is still staying strong, staying focused, staying on top of her game, but the doctors keep saying, you can't do any more chemo, we can't do this, we can't do that. When the doctors say you can't, and I know when the doctors told JS, we can't give you any more chemo, your body can't take it. Hans, we went to four more hospitals after that because yeah. he refused to take <laughs> no for an answer. And we would go, we went everywhere trying to get him right. help. When the doctors cut you off, that is the hardest time ever. And so everybody, get out there and pray. Selena's doing all kinds of um, natural things, and she's just determined. She's so determined, so focused, so happy, so gorgeous, so focused on living life. And and that's what we have to we have to give her just a hug, just send her a yeah. hug, and or at least that, like you said, a prayer. Or think about her. The um, you know the, the the reality is all of our stories end in an obituary, mm -hmm. right? I mean they do. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest. Mine will when I get run over by a freight train. <laughs> I didn't hear the well. <laughs> Uh, so, but my, my point is that you still hear people say, well, if I should pass, mm -hmm. we're all going to, we're all going to pass, gonna right? We have an expiration We do, date. right? Yeah. We don't know what it is, but yeah. we, we are going to pass. And so we, you know, I don't say that to be morbid or depressive, but I say that because it means we got to absolutely celebrate the time that we have here and that positive mental attitude that you just talked about, about, you know, even when everybody else is saying, no, you're still holding on, mm -hmm. somebody might say it's a fool's errand or you're, you know, you're just, you're tricking yourself. No, you're, you are making the most. And I, I promised myself I was going to be going by 1145. So yes, sir, here, right. let, let me tell you one quick story. And I might've told it before, but I was in uh, Munich, Germany with my dad. It was that kind of wet, snowy, sleet, miserable day. We're in a restaurant overlooking kind of a city square and there's a guy out there wearing a yellow workman's jumpsuit and he's got on the 1980s yellow um, Sony Walkman and he's literally siphoning out raw sewage out Ooh. of a blockage, right? Fun. So it was freezing cold, wet sideways sleet coming down and this guy was just singing and dancing and he was working that hose like he was having the best time in the world. And my dad called me over the window and he said, that man right there literally has the crappiest job in the city right now. I mean, it's freezing cold, it's miserable outside, and he is siphoning human waste yep. out of the sewage. Smiling. Smiling. But he's got a job, he's, you know, he's got a warm cup of coffee on his next break. He's, he made the decision to be happy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think about that man, I don't know what, what, what happened to him, but the fact that, I mean, I was probably 10, mm -hmm. and I remember the fact that that guy was having the time of his life by choice. So mm -hmm. uh, every day we have the opportunity and sort of the obligation, I feel like, to try to extract. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't half squeeze an orange and throw it away. Squeeze every drop out of that orange. Get every bit of juice out of life that you possibly can. <clears throat> thank you so much. I, I, we couldn't end the year without this, this young man. Oh, thank you that I've known since he was four. Keep calling he's me young. known me since I weighed 128. I'm so happy. He's That's about where I am now. <laughs> That's about where I am now. So. so it's so good to have you here. Thank you so much. We're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, Miss Evelyn's going to join me. So hang tight, guys. Love you, Sherry. Thank you. I love you, Betty. Yep. Love Thank you. you. Love you. I love you. I love you.
you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Hans Rupert has left the building. He's like Elvis, he's left the building. But Miss <laughs> Evelyn is here with me. And we want to invite <laughs> folks to ball ground. What's going to be happening yes. in ball ground? So this Friday we had the uh, ball ground parade. The uh, so March of the Toys. March of the Toys parade. So bring an unwrap present to drop in any other boxes that are going to be uh, all over downtown ball ground. So that's going to be a huge event, like every year. This parade is like massive, y'all. Yes. It's like big yes. time. Cool, and if your kids love lights and music and noise and Santa, mm -hmm. they're going to love this parade. Yeah, and they're yeah. going to have tons of vendors, so the vendors are going to start around like 4.30, 5 o'clock. Try to get there early because they close in the roads around yes. 6 o'clock. So if you want to be part of the parade, you need to get there early. Park your car anywhere you can. Obviously, don't park where it says no parking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, just walk around, enjoying some food, some drinks. Shop around all the uh, uh, with all the vendors, and then get ready for seven o'clock with the parade starts. And we're going to be at our office, which has our office is smaller now than it used to be. But the first two years that I lived in Ballgram, we did the parade, and I opened up this little side part of our office, and we had refreshments. And everybody mm -hmm. said, "Oh, thank you for doing this. We got warm. We got out of the cold. It is going to be cold Friday yeah. night." So we're going to have our office. We'll have the heat on. We'll have hot cider. We'll have hot chocolate. We'll have cookies, we'll have some fresh apples, we'll have different things for you to come in and have a snack and to take a break and to get out of the cold. We will also have a little photo op there where you can take your family and stand in front of our office. Evelyn's made this really cute little thing, setting. And if your children are small, we're gonna have two small chairs sitting there where you can sit your children in the chairs and we're gonna let you take photos of your children. So get out and enjoy beautiful downtown ball ground. Mm -hmm. Now there's something in the air in ball ground and it seems to be happiness and mm -hmm. food and people. 
Yes, and just, everything is so decorated right now for beautiful, Christmas. So beautiful. Music playing all day. It's, it's beautiful, even though the weather today is a little Yeah, weird, the weather but. today, not so good. <laughs> now, now, we're headed to Morganton, and I want to share something with you. We've been taking products down to the CARES Community Thrift Store in Jasper. And ladies, if you've ever wanted a pocketbook, I think I've taken 75 pocketbooks now and probably that many pair of shoes. From one person. <laughs> one person. And we're going today and we're getting another load of the same things. We're getting more pocketbooks, more shoes. So if you're shopping, number one, the Cares, the Cares Thrift Store in, in Jasper is just on top of their game. They are amazing and they give back every single year. They put almost a million dollars worth of money back into the our community. community with the Boys and Girls Clubs, with so many things that they do to help others. And so, of course, I would want to help them. And we are gonna load up again today and take a whole nother load. So yes. I don't care what color pocketbook you're looking for. We they have it all them. colors. <laughs> we have them. We have yellow, purple, yellow, uh, again, pink, White, orange, you name it. Black. I, I've been so Great. tickled, and, and I've known this lady a long, long time. I adored her, and um, she did love shoes, and she did love clothes, didn't she? <laughs> yes, she did. Oh, my God. Now, talk yes. about the wrapping event that we're going to do. So, that's going to be next Thursday. Uh, it's going to be in our office. So, we are trying, we share it on the uh, Bogran Life. Uh, I know Justin shared it on the Cherokee Connect, uh, where you can come to our office, bring your presents, you can wrap it all for free. We're going to be providing uh, uh, wrapping paper for free. We have some boats, our little boxes, bags, and stuff like that. Now, if you want to bring your own, you can. We have, we're going to have tape, scissors, boats, anything, so you can just get out of your house. Hi from you, you know. And some hey people don't kid. like wrapping. Yeah. Oh, I hate wrapping. <laughs> I used to pay one of my employees to do all my wrapping, and Miss my Audrey wrapping loved is it. yeah. <laughs> one piece of tape and I'm done uh, and then I flip it so it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> but Evelyn came up with this idea because we have all this wrapping paper and, and I said this would wrap mm -hmm. the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'd wrap yeah, the world. We have so a lot we want to invite y'all to come and be part of uh, just come and, and hang out and, and get to know ball ground while you're doing this mm -hmm. because ball ground is Rick keeps telling me it's not a town, it's a city. We mm -hmm. are a city. We're a city. We were chartered as a city. It is a tiny, tiny city in Cherokee County that to me is just the best place to live. Yeah, just it is. the best place to mm -hmm. live. We have it, all the little restaurants that are all good. The shops are all good. And everybody um, gives back. Mm -hmm. Everybody gives back. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the really cool thing about about Ball Ground. Now the parade has been giving back for years and years and years and I remember one year Freddie and I did the parade in the motor home and it had the ETC logos all over the side. It had our pictures, it had everything. It was 23 degrees that day, and everybody from Santa to the Grinch to the elves, they were all happy that we had the motorhome <laughs> there, and they all got to get in it because it was cold. Now, tomorrow night, it's supposed to be around 36, 36 or Friday night. It's yeah, supposed to be it. around 36, so y'all need to bundle up and be prepared, but please come. We will have hot cider. We will have hot chocolate. We will have a place for you to rest your weary bones. And we hope to see you in ball ground. And you know, when, when we get out in ball ground and we, we walk around and we get to know people, because you're not from around here, as my granny'd say, <clears throat> you have probably made more friends than anybody because you don't ever meet a stranger. No. <laughs> no. She joined the garden club and now they'll probably make her president of the garden club because she no. does everything. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, we just decorated the float for the parade this um well, yesterday, right? Yesterday was Tuesday. Day yeah, yesterday. the day yeah. before yesterday. Yeah. We yeah. we decorated it. Well, some of the members came yesterday. We almost died. Yes, that <laughs> literally was funny. almost that was died. Funny. <laughs> but um, no, it was just a joke. We didn't we didn't die. It was nothing bad. But it was funny. Like we all climb on top of the float, which because we wanted to take a picture. So we were like, just go all the way in the back. Go on the way in the back. And, and then the, the trailer just over. like, yeah, it was like, whoa, it was like low, slow motion. Like we were like, ah. uh oh. No, but anyways, no. but it was fun. So yeah, it was fun. Come Friday to see all the floats are going to be amazing. Obviously, our float from the Garden Club is going to be good. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> but, don't forget um, the Botanical Garden is there for your it's use. It's decorated. Every day, yes. every day. They yeah. just decorated on Monday and Tuesday. I took a video, uh, maybe you can share it later mm -hmm. on. It looks amazing. You can go in there and walk around, take pictures, everything. Everything is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So just bring the family, walk mm -hmm. around. I know it's a little cold, but. 
And in the dead of winter, you and I were out showing a house yesterday, and we stopped, and you took some pictures of beautiful foliage today. Today, red, Bright beautiful. Red. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Right, red. Yeah, so don't let winter give you the blahs. Get out and experience just the, the goodness of everything. And, and the botanical gardens, you see more in the winter because everything's kind of grown down and you can really look mm -hmm. and see all the work. And um, I know the little bridge, I love that little bridge and the rock work down in the creek, you know, it's just, yeah. and you see it now more than ever. So, yeah. and also if you want to do a tribute to a veteran, <clears throat> we have the new Veterans um, Memorial down in Ball Ground. And you can purchase a brick and, and do it in honor it's of somebody. It's only $30 to yeah. do it, yeah. What a nice gift and what a nice gesture and what a nice way to remember somebody. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Now I gotta remind y'all, we are going to be <clears throat> McKaysville Copper Hill Saturday afternoon. Mr. Ella J is going to be driving candy and I'm gonna be throwing candy, not the car, the candy. <laughs> and we're gonna hope to get to see a whole lot of y'all. I love, our viewership has always been so much fun up in the North Market and I met so many amazing people and I hope to get to see some of y'all that I haven't seen in a long time. It amazes me, I never get disappointed when I go to the IGA up in McKaysville Copper Hill because they always have such a sweet atmosphere in a little grocery store. And that's the thing about that community. For 64 years, the Kiwanis have made this parade possible and it just grows and grows and grows. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. So come out and you will get to hear a little bit of music by Mr. Ella J. You will get to um, meet him and it, it'll be fun. I promise you it'll be fun and uh, it will be one of those things they had said 30% chance of rain. We are hoping that that changes and the rain doesn't come at all because the parade will be changed to the next week if it does rain. So we're just hoping that it does not rain. Now you've talked Scotty into helping y'all with the parade in ball ground. Yes. <laughs> Poor Scotty. <laughs> yes. Scotty's a good one. Scotty's a good one. <clears throat> we are looking at 2023, the housing market is changing a little bit. Um, people are thinking a little more seriously. People are still looking, cash buyers are still oh, coming. Yeah. And because of what happened in Florida, sadly, we have benefited because people have left Florida with their insurance money and they're coming to Georgia. Oh yeah, other people in Fort Myers, they have lost their houses yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they cannot rebuild. Like and, and they some don't areas, want to. I mean, some areas yeah. can, but. <clears throat> And, and they're afraid to. I mm -hmm. think that's one of the things. Now, last night, speaking of fear, uh, it lightened, it thundered. I was a feared all night long because I kept hearing it. Well, it not bad. only that, that it has changed it in Florida <coughs> because, you know, some people pay the extra insurance to cover, you know, flood insurance and stuff like that. Now that it has flooded, now it is on the map. Right. It's on the book. So your, yeah. Yeah, your insurance yeah. goes really high after that. So it's like, so you it is want to rebuild? Leave Florida and come to Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people. Now, um, for, for folks who are watching us uh, on YouTube or in different areas and, and you haven't been to the tiny towns that we support from Ball Ground to Turtle Town, Turtle Town, Tennessee is just over the line and um, McKaysville, Georgia is just at the Copper Hill, Tennessee line and then Murphy, North Carolina is just north of us. So all the areas that we serve are in an area that welcomes newcomers. We welcome new construction. We welcome selling you a lot. We want these mountains to continue to grow. And, and one of the things we have seen, if we chose the group of friends that we associate with, they're probably half and half, half newcomers and half people who were raised in ball ground. Mm -hmm. And at the Garden Club, I know you've met a lot of people and I've met a lot of yeah. people that moved in from here, oh, but yeah. they became a part of the community. Yeah. You know, they didn't just get in their house and sit down, they became part of the community. Yeah, they want to help. I mean, I have uh, this lady that helps a lot at the, uh, uh, Dominic's mission. She mm -hmm. volunteers there. She joined the, uh, uh, what is the other place that they sell the pecans and all that stuff? Oh, Lions Club. Yeah, yeah. the Lions, Lions Club. Club. Yeah. And then she's also part of the Botanical Garden. I mean, she volunteers every day. She's active mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see her somewhere doing something. And that, that and not only good. keeps us young, it keeps yeah. us healthy and it keeps us happy. Yeah, well, she says she moved from, uh, I forgot exactly where she moved from, but um, she came here for her kids and grandkids. And she said, I help with the grandkids, but they go to school. So mm -hmm. I have to do something else until they get home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so, and that's, that's the thing, so stay active, stay, and become a part of the community. If you've just moved to LJ, 
get to know the community. If you're an animal lover, get to know Fogus because Fogus is the yes. big Friends of Gilmer Animal Shelter. There is two shelters in need of towels. So Pickens County and Paulding County are needing towels. So if you have any towels laying around that you're not using it, you can donate it. You can bring. I think that is a store. I think that's store, the same store that, that we went and drop off the stuff. Cares. They collect uh -huh. it. They collect okay. in towels as well. Uh, there is another place in Pickens County. They collect in blankets for the uh, the animals. Like they have pigs. They have uh, donkeys. They all rescue. So if you have any blankets laying around that you don't want them, I mean, you can always donate. So find anything in your house that you want to donate for people because people right now need stuff. Mm -hmm. So And cold weather hasn't hit yet, but it's oh, going it's to hit. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. And, and it's coming. when you think about animals out, you know, um, I know yeah, we need that. And, <laughs> and if you have a linen closet full of stuff that nobody's using, that doesn't make any sense. So, you know, go through and if you sort, if you get new, if you whatever, either donate it to the thrift store or donate it to the animal shelters. And um, Gilmer County Animal Shelter, thank God, has, has so many great volunteers, but they can always use more volunteers because oh, yeah. a lot of them are full now. People adopted during COVID and then they got back to their real life and many people gave up oh, their animals. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of animals the are, are for full. a long term, 16 plus years sometimes. If yeah. you're one of the adopted pet right now around Christmas or want to give a pet to your kids, think about it before you make mm -hmm. a decision mm -hmm. to go to a shelter and adopt a pet because they're not toys. Mm -hmm. They're not toys. They don't run out of batteries. They, they are alive. They are animals, Forever. they need time, yeah. and you have to commit to at least 15 <coughs> to 16 years to a pet. Mm -hmm. So if you want an animal, go and adopt a pet, but if you're thinking about like it's not going to work out, oh, they're, they pee in the carpet, they're going to do that if you don't train them, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're a long-term, you know. And such love in return. Yes, yeah. I mean, well, after you train them, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to say happy third birthday to my grand dog. His name is Dexter, <laughs> and he is the biggest, gawkiest looking, beautiful, beautiful uh, dog. And he is my son-in-law, Siggy's, and Siggy boards him when he travels because he wants Dexter to have a really good experience. So he boards him, and he boards him at like a five-star place. He, they have a better time yeah, there yeah, than at it's home. It's like, I want to check in to Dexter's <laughs> hotel, you know? So, yeah. so, but when you do make a commitment to an animal, and, and it is around the holidays, people do get all warm and fuzzy and think, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Oh, listen, and you laugh at me, because I used to have nine dogs in my house, nine dogs. Now, forget it. As they died off, I couldn't stand the trauma of losing them, and it's so hard when you lose mm -hmm. a pet. But often the way to get through that is to adopt another pet, mm -hmm. but adopt it with that commitment in mind. You know, and if you're not ready, maybe just foster a pet. Right. You, fo right. you can foster between like one to three months, and then you can test it out. And if you're ready, you can go and adopt. But if you're not ready, don't adopt a pet. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't. That's it. So, and yeah. if you're doing your year-end planning and you have a little bit of money you want to give, the Friends of Gilmer Animal Shelters would love to invite you in to learn a little bit more about them and what they do because they are so big in spay and neuter and that is so very, very important. It has changed the dynamics of Gilmer County yeah. because they have caught so many feral cats. They have taken care of so many dogs. They, they do the inoculation. They have a, a different times of the year that they save you so much money. And that's part of giving back, mm -hmm. you know, and that's yeah. something we can all do. And if you, um, you know, I caught that cat and took her and had her fixed and bless her heart. She had had like, I think they said she probably had seven litters of kittens oh and, and that's, and she looked so thin and so unhealthy. And so I got her fixed and, yeah. you know, I don't know where she went after that. One she, at a time, you know, one animal at a time. If you one can animal just one, time. one animal is, yeah. is a big thing, you know. It's a big deal. It's yeah. a big deal. Now, can we tell the story about what your animals did while you went on vacation? And no, no, this time they were this good. This time, time they were good, but last, <laughs> last time, year, no, last they were good. Time, yeah, what they, did they do, Evelyn? Well, I, my, my dog was still a puppy and we left for a week. We went to Cancun last year and we have a pet sitter that she was coming like at least four or five times a, a day. But they're so used to us being there, in and out, in and out, but we there playing with them, we touch them, we, you know, we sing songs and whatever. And I think- She does a them, birthday party for her dog. So. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, they're yeah. my kids. Yeah, uh, and Kayla say like, well, you have more pictures of the dog than us, and I say yes because every time I try to take pictures of you, you're like, no, I don't like pictures. Yeah, anyways, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I think I was like the 
five days after we were gone, and they decided to destroy, destroy the couch. And they did. And they did. They did, <laughs> and, they did. and we watched it on the camera when they were doing. I was yelling at them, and they were all confused, but they, it, I mean, the damage was done. The damage but this was year, done. With, they were good. I mean, the puppy was a little older now. He's almost two two years old. The other one is four years old, so they know better. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't touch mm -hmm. anything now, mm -hmm. and uh, they were good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, they were good. Yeah. Now, Erin, can we cue up one of Dwight's Christmas songs and let's end with that today? Just a Christmas CD. Can we do that? Okay. All right. Um, it is the Christmas season. It is the holiday season. It is a happy time for many, many people. It is a very sad time for many, many people. And um, when I look at my circle of friends, so many of us have lost a child. So many of us have lost a, a mate, a spouse. So many of us have gone through so much. And on this Saturday, there will be a memorial service for my sister. Um, she was the best. And I put this picture of us up here when we were little. We were at Rich's in downtown Atlanta. She was nothing but a blessing to me. And there are so many of you who have been such blessings to me and I appreciate that because we can be a blessing or we can be a curse. And you can decide, do well, you, you want to be a to good be person or you want to be a bad person? So we want you to leave today as, as we head up the road. We're going to Morganton and we're going to bring back a whole lot of cool stuff for the thrift store in Jasper. We want you to be a blessing to somebody. Just think of somebody that will make you smile, somebody that has made you a better person and pick up the phone and call them and just say, hey, I appreciate what you did for me. Right? Yeah. It's so that's simple. Right. It's yeah. so simple. Well, we're going to leave you now with a little bit of music by Mr. Ella J. And I believe, is it Jingle Bell Rock? Yay, let's do it. Get up, everybody. It's Christmas time. horse open sleigh over the hills we go laughing all the way bells on bobtails ring making spirits bright oh what fun it is to ride in Santa's sleigh tonight hey jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way oh what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh Christmas time.